Welcome back to the 180 System 21 question series and today we're going to talk about the law of reciprocal inhibition, what it is and how we use it clinically to get our patients better faster and staying better longer. So what we want to do is review what the law of reciprocal inhibition is first because there's a ton of misconception out there about how it works, what it actually is, um, what the effects are of um, common physical therapy uh, modalities and treatment strategies. Um, so today let's first break down the science of how the law of re reciprocal inhibition works and then we'll show you some uh, live demo on how we use it to our advantage with the 180 system. Alright, let's look at this diagram behind me. So we have a lower extremity quads, hams, agonist, antagonist. We have a message going from the quads through the A1 afferent pathway through the dorsal root ganglion to the spinal cord level. Now, here's where the magic happens. The inhibitory neuron is at the spinal cord level. This afferent pathway is either going to bifurcate and go back to the agonist, or it's going to go through the key, the inhibitory inner neuron. If it goes through the inhibitory inner neuron, now we're going to get an inhibitory uh, message back to our antagonist. So we have a normal contraction coming here. That message comes back saying contract, contract, contract. If it goes through the inhibitory inner neuron, what do you think happens? And, stay, and instead of saying contract, 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 it says contract, contract, contract. So what does this look like uh, clinically as far as this diagram goes? So if we have a patient come into the clinic and they're complaining of tight hamstrings, Conventional thought process would say, well, go massage, roll, stretch the hamstrings. What we would say is first, let's figure out why the hamstrings are tight at the physiological level versus the symptom level. So physiology would tell us this hamstring it could be tight because we don't have a reciprocal response coming through this nervous system. So what we would say is if this hamstring is tight, we're going to look at the opposing side to see if we have inhibition. Because if we have inhibition here, we don't get this response telling the hamstring to contract less. So what we would do is figure out if this is inhibited, and it is, we're going to reverse the inhibition, which resets this pathway, and now we get a normal inhibitory response coming to the hamstrings. So when they extend their knee, their hamstrings contract less, their quads contract more, and we have normal motion. Okay, so let's look at the law of reciprocal inhibition, what it looks like clinically. So uh, our diagram was quads and uh, hamstrings. What we're going to look at today here is hamstrings and abs. So usually patients lack toe touch because of hamstring tightness, low back pain. We think abs. So if we have our patient sit up and try touching her toes, she can just get there. Does that feel tight hams or low back? Tight hams. Okay, come on up. Arms across your chest. That one down there. Hold tight. Good. That one down there. Hold tight. Good. Okay. So we're going to say she's inhibited in her lower ab uh, lower abdominals, and that's why she can't touch her toes. Put it on your back. So rather than stretching the hamstrings, just like we talked about in the diagram, we're not going to pick on the tight muscle. We're going to target the inhibited muscle, which is not giving the re reciprocal response to the hamstrings to contract less. So basically what we're saying is the inhibited lower abdominals are not contracting, hamstrings are not getting the uh, reciprocal response to contract less, that's causing lack of range of motion, limitation, hamstring tightness. Okay, come back up, arms across, this elbow down, so we retest facilitation, she's better, that one down, hold, good, now touch your toes again. And now she can go a couple inches past the toes, come back up, less hamstring tightness? Yes. Okay. Okay, so that's a good example of what the law of reciprocal inhibition looks like clinically. So following that up, this patient needs to work on abdominal facilitation to decrease hamstring tightness, spasm, that kind of stuff. So rather than picking on the hamstrings with her home exercise program, what we're going to do is give her facilitation exercises for the abs, which are going to follow up with functional exercise programming, lunge walks, crossover walks, squats, all that kind of stuff to refacilitate normal mechanics and use the law of reciprocal inhibition to our advantage.